Hi, it's Kevin here and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, baking uh, normal maps in Substance Painter and I'm going to talk about why we do it and I'm going to show you how we do it. And uh, it's the most asked question I get from my uh, students over on Udemy. I mean, why do we, why are we baking and how do I do it? So here is an example of a chair, a medieval chair that I've been working on, I've worked on, and um, I'm currently building a medieval scene. And this is a chair to go into that scene. Now, this blue one here is the low poly version. And this one here is the high poly, poly version. I originally created this in um, ZBrush. Let me just show you the ZBrush file. Here's the ZBrush file. I sculpted this in here and um, created this high detailed version of this. And then I use Z Remesher to take it down to the low version, which you can see here. And let me just turn the edge facing on and there we go. You can see completely dense. If I zoom into there, you can see how dense that is, but it's got all the detail and that's what I'm after. And all the wood grain and the patterns on the wood and everything. And this one here is low, certainly not low enough for any game. Uh, and you can see I could optimize this a ton more, you know, you know, thousands and thousands of polygons can come out of this model if it was to go into a game and I would still be able to bake the normals from this high mesh onto this low mesh. But I just wanted it for the scene that I'm creating. I wasn't too fussed about topology. I just wanted a really good, decent model to bake my detail onto and for the engine that I'm using to be able to render it at a decent frame rate because there's a lot more objects than just this chair. So it's going to be a whole suite of objects. Uh, let me turn off edge faces again before it struggles. So there we go. Um, so from here, I mean, before I started this video, I separated them, but they have to be, before you start, you have to have these objects in the same place. Let me just undo the move that I did. I went, uh, let's change, me changing the material. And there, it was there. Okay, let me just change that color of that material. There we go. So the blue one is the low and the white one as you can see, is the high detail. So before you start, make sure they are in exactly the same position. And ZBrush is good for that because when you're sculpting the high detail version, um, you can Z remesh it and create low poly versions of that. And then you can use project, which will project all the verts um, as close as it can get to, to the high version. It will project all the vertices out and uh, match it with the high version as close as it possibly can. And that's usually enough to get a really good exact bake in Substance Painter, I find. So that's the kind of method that I use. I use Max to sort of set up its UVs, do any cleanup. You know, if it is a game model, I'll often um, optimize the mesh further and quite often rearrange the UVs so as it can uh, work in a game. Uh, but they all have to be in the same place and you can see that these ob th this uh, chair is made up of several objects and you can see if i select one you watch the the position of the pivot here for each of the objects exactly the same position all the way down through and that goes for the high version as well in exactly the same position all the way down through and that's really important to get a good exact bake in Substance Painter. And once I've got it to this stage, I then export it as two FBX files, one high and one low. And it's really important that you get those. You can see all the names of these objects over here, underscore low, underscore, they're all low, and the high one is underscore high. So when you export, make sure you name them underscore high and underscore low. And then I go into Substance Painter, and this is where the sort of magic baking happens. Because you want your, this is the low version. And I'll show you that now. If I turn off, there's the wireframe. It's very high, like I said, but it's low enough for me to paint it in here and take it into my rendering engine uh, where I'm going to render it. And that's in Marmoset. Um, but I want all the detail from my high version. I don't want, this is too low. 
you know it hasn't got my detail but I, I mean I could paint that detail in substance painter but I chose to sculpt it um, in ZBrush instead and I'm now going to transfer it into substance painter when I do my bake so let's do that let's bake it and see what happens and the reason why we bake is because let me just go back to max again let's just select the low version and move it back we want the details of this high version chair onto on this low version we don't want the polygons of this because it would kill the renderer it would kill any game engine out there at the moment it's just too dense i mean look at the density of this of this you know it's it's, it's probably got the contents of an entire level just in that chair in terms of poly count you know it's ridiculous millions millions of polygons in there um, and that's because it holds all the detail and we want that detail into our low version here so that's why we do it you know we want detail let me just turn off the edge faces because that's intense yeah we want the detail from here on there because we want to use this in our game engine i hope that's clear because a lot of students are finding it difficult to sort of grasp that concept um, we don't care about the normals of our low poly version because the you know the normals on the actual mesh is going to be overwritten by a, a, a normal map you know which is data from a texture file basically an image file um, and that will di dictate um, the normals per pixel and that's how the light will interact with my object it won't use the normals of the polygons if you know what I mean so I hope that's clear so I've exported these two we've gone to substance painter we've got we've loaded in the low mesh and you can see that there I'm going to turn the Turn that off like so. And now we're going to bake, bake all our uh, maps onto here. Let's just switch that on, there we go. This is for our texture set here. Uh, settings, we're gonna make that 4K. We want a 4K bake here. And for each, you can see I've got two materials, and one for the metal parts and one for the wood parts. And if I turn off the wood, see these are metal strips that I want to make metal that go over the top of the um, the armrests and the the back plate the headrest of the chair and obviously this is the wood you know the whole chair is pretty much wood apart from these metal strips on top of the armrests um, so I've got two and in each one of those we want to add an ambient occlusion and in that one I also want to add an ambient occlusion uh, make sure they're both set to 4k like that yep and then we go to click on here bake mesh maps now all these mesh maps that we're going to bake here you can see them down here are going to be used by Substance Painter to help you create your materials in your scene to help the procedural features of Substance Painter apply your you know you know your materials and your paint and your selections onto your model it uses these uh, mesh maps so we're going to bake them now output size we're going to make 4k we're going to turn off ID I made a mistake I should have had an ID map for this because it was you know I've already textured it you saw it um, I'll show you it at the end um, but you'll see that the wood grain I wanted it to go in the correct direction for every panel on this chair I should have created an ID map to allow me to select them easily but instead I used folders and selected them polygons from inside substance painter just took the long way around i should have used id maps anyway that's a different thing so what we want to do over here is make sure you select the high definition mesh and i've shown you that just now we want this one on there so we've, i've already exported this as a fbx so i want to make sure i select that mesh because i want to bake it onto this one and so i go in here click on that little button there 
and I select the high and you can see I've exported it as chair underscore high. The one in the scene is chair underscore low. So we select that and we click on that and you can see it puts itself inside this little box here. Chair underscore high FBX, like so. And then you scroll down and where it says match, because I've got two separate uh, models in here on materials, when I bake this, I don't want the chair to influence the normals on my metal and vice versa. I want them, I want just the normals from each of its own object from the high mesh. I don't want it to influence each, each other and to stop that from happening. Because sometimes if you bake and you see that you're, and you've got multiple objects in your object, multiple components in your object, and you see some distortion, some stretching and some weirdness going on, it's probably because the meshes around it are influencing um, influencing the bake. So sometimes you'll get bake from one object onto another and the normal maps will just look weird. So to stop that from happening, just click on here and click on by mesh name and that will just bake uh, individual objects within your scene. You know, I won't bake normals from the chair onto the metal and from the metal onto the chair, it will just keep uh, keep the components separate, basically. And that's just keeps it clean, which is what you want. And that's it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to change any of this because some people use a cage file. You can add a cage file, uh, but I don't need to for this. And I haven't done yet because, like I said, ZBrush creates a really good exact um, match, pretty much, using the project tool inside sub inside uh, zbrush um, it does such a great job at matching it and getting it close as possible that you don't need to use a cage file but it's there if you want to and that's that's quite a good thing to have but like i said i don't need it so i'm not going to do that i'm just going to point to my high mesh i've turned on by mesh name I've turned off idea I don't need an id map although i should have done and now i'm just going to bake all texture sets like so. And now we're just going to wait. Take a bit of time because I've got it on 4K. And the normal is usually the longest of all the bake uh, mesh maps here. I'll speed this up because it does take time. And there we go. That's the full bake done. So I click on OK. You can see I've got my, you know, all my bakes, uh, all my mesh maps, and that is the final bake result. You can see it's pretty damn perfect. And a really good bake. All this pattern, let me just show you, it's still the low mesh. Um, if I turn on, there you go, still the low mesh. And so what I've done is just baked the information from the high mesh onto the low mesh and it's created a normal map for me to use as a base with all that detail on it and that's fantastic that gives me a really really good head start so that's how and why we bake maps in substance painter uh, well normal anyway the other reasons are because we want substance painter to use like the curvature and the thickness so it can understand the model when you're using procedural uh, texturing inside substance so there's several let me just go back into there let me yeah so it creates you know a normal world space normal ambient occlusion curvature position thickness it creates these mesh maps to you know to enable you to create your procedural procedurally generated textures and it uses the information from those maps to let you do that so that's it that's how you do it that's why you do it and i hope you find that useful and if this you know if you want more information on on this stuff and how to build objects for environments for games check out my courses on udemy and if you want to follow me on some personal projects and some other things and other courses that aren't on udemy then check out my patreon page and you can follow me over there and all the information for all of that is in the description below. 
So that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.